Welcome to Boot Logic, the channel that has nothing to do with boots and might have something to do with logic. Roll intro. So you're interested in setting up a home theater server or NAS device. In this episode, we're going to show you from start to finish how to set up a Synology NAS and start a database for coding. This setup will give you the best possible quality for a home viewing experience. and setting up a database that all your streaming devices can talk to. This means that you can start watching a movie on one device and resume it on another device. The database will synchronize all your media players to the server. Setting up a media server has a lot of benefits. You can store all your files, not just media. Using schedule and tasks, your server can automatically sync and back up computers on your network. The hard drives in your servers are redundant. Depending on how you set up your servers, you can have a drive fail or two drives fail without losing any of your data. Running a database on your server will keep all your media synchronized and up to date. You can also host websites, email servers, and a ton of other electronic goodness. You can also share your media collection with people outside your network. Most people think that getting set up with a server will cost a fortune, but you can buy used servers online for a very reasonable price. The same goes with hard drives. Also, you can start with as little as two hard drives and add more as you need them. You can even use your old PC and install a modified version of the Synology operating system just to get you started. So in this demonstration, we're going to be using a Synology DS1812+. Plus. This is an 8-bay network attached storage. When looking for a NAS, I highly suggest you check out Synology. So if we look at the back of the server, we can see it has two Ethernet ports, six USB ports, and two eSATA ports. The eSATA ports can be used for expansion. When choosing a hard drive for your server, I highly recommend you go with a NAS rated hard drive. Something like the WD Red or the Iron Wolf Pro. A NAS rated hard drive is built for 24-7 continuous use. It is also intelligent enough to understand that it is part of a set of hard drives and not just a single drive. That way, if it has an error, it understands how to bypass it. So the only tool we're going to need when installing our hard drives is a Phillips head screwdriver. So we can just release the hard drive tray, stick our hard drive in and align the holes, and screw them in. Make sure you use at least four screws. and put it back in the server and push until you hear the click. Now you can install an additional seven drives in this machine, but you're gonna need a minimum of two drives. Once all your hard drives are installed, all you have to do is plug in the power and at least one ethernet cable. So once plugged in and powered up, we need to find our server on the network. Open your web browser and type in find.synology.com. Once the website has scanned your network, it may or may not find your disk station. There is a link to the Synology Assistant below. Install the Synology Assistant. After the Assistant has run its scan, 
choose your guest station. Click install now and let your guest station install its operating system. Give your server a name, a username, and a password. Quick Connect is a service that allows you to connect to your guest station from outside your network. If you want, fill in this information. The first step is to select the storage manager. In here, we want to create a volume. Select the drives you want to include in this volume. Next, we want to check our network interface and make sure we're using a manual configuration. We want to make sure NFS is selected under File Services. Now we're going to create a shared folder. We're going to call it Media. We're going to make sure read-write permissions are set for the administrator. And we're going to set up the NFS sharing. Under hostname or IP, if you would like to grant access to everybody on your network, just use the asterisk symbol. Inside the media share, we are going to create four folders. Movies, music, TV, and docs. Take note of where your media share is located. For instance, mine is located under forward slash volume one forward slash media forward slash movies. So we need to go to our package center and install MariaDB10. This will be our database. It will require you set a password. You're going to want to remember this password. installed make sure you enable TCIP connections and you can just leave the port defaulted at 3307. And 
after that we're going to install PHP MyAdmin. If you click on PHP MyAdmin, near the bottom you'll see what address it is. Now for the username you're going to want to enter root and the password is the MariaDB10 password we created earlier. So under user accounts, we're going to add a user account. Give the account a username and password. So under database for user account, we're going to grant all privileges on wildcard names. And we're going to grant all global privileges. Verify that you've added a new user. And now we're going to have to make a few files so Cody can connect to the database. So create a new text file and populate it with this information. And verify what address your server is on and that you are on manual configuration for your network. I will leave a link below this YouTube video. Just download and modify the information as needed. Populate the IP address, the username, and the password. and save the document as an XML file. This next file, sources.xml, will tell Cody where your music and movies are located. Again, I will leave a link to this information below so you can download it and just populate your information. Once both files are saved as an XML, put them in your Docs folder. This way you can have easy access to them via Kodi. Next, I'm going to download Kodi to show you how to connect your database. In Kodi, we want to go to Settings and File Manager. We need to add a source so we can access the Docs folder. So we're going to browse and select Network File System, NFS. You should see the address of your server. Click on it. Drill down to Docs. And then select OK. OK again. And now you should see it in your file manager.
When selected, you should see the advanced settings and the sources.xml. We need to copy these over to your profile directory. So select your profile directory and right click and copy. Right click again and copy again. You should now see them on the other side. You will have to exit out of Kodi at this point. So now we're going to relaunch Kodi and we're going to click on enter file section. Now here are the two sources we've added. We're going to right click on our HD movie test server folder and we're going to set content. We want to set it to movies. We're going to do the same thing with TV shows. and allow it to refresh. And as you see, it's scanned the movies and it's scanned the TV shows. You only have to set the content once. The database will remember these settings. So we're going to exit out of Kodi and we're going to uninstall it and I'm going to reinstall it just to show you that it remembers all our settings. So again we're going to go under File Manager and we're going to add Source. We're going to add our NFS source, choose our server, browse to the document folder, we're going to open our profile directory and copy these two files over. And exit out of Kodi. Now when we relaunch Kodi, you can see all our movies and TV shows are still saved. Once you've completed setting up the database in the PHP MyAdmin, when you're going to deploy a new Kodi box, all you have to do is install Kodi and copy those two files over. If you have multiple TVs in your house, you only have to update the library for one of them and all of them will get the update. So if you've made it this far, congratulations. This setup will give you the absolute best possible quality with zero transcoding. This also means that your server doesn't have to be a workhorse. And once you've done the work to set up your database, you really only have to do it once. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And again, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.